Hello everybody, my name is Noah, and today we are going to be doing the October setup for my bullet journal. I have my pens here, I have mostly autographic liners, which will probably be all I am using. If I use something else, I'll be sure to let you know, but yes, those are my pens of choice. I have my Archer and Olive bullet journal. It is one from the Plant Based Bride collaboration. So it is no longer available, this exact design, but they have lots of other great designs. Um, I think it's 160 pages. I forget the GSM, but I'll, I'll insert any important information here. Um, I'm very, very close to the end. I have sketched out the entirety of October already, and when October is over, I have nine-ish pages left. So we're gonna have to get creative for November, December, but we are not there yet. So we don't need to worry about that just yet. But I have myself a cup of coffee. I have a couple cute pumpkins to keep me company. And I thought for October, a fun theme would be nocturnal animals, animals that are awake at night because nighttime's kind of spooky. Halloween's a spooky month, etc., etc. So yeah, we're gonna be getting into that in a second. But first I wanted to share a little bit more about this bullet journal. All of this you probably already know if you've watched my other videos, but if you're new, hi, hello. Um, this bullet journal is very nature inspired. The overall theme is the Appalachian Trail. Um, I live in an area called Appalachia. This is part of the Eastern United States. So this runs south to north and vice versa. So I wanted my, I wanted my spreads that weren't specifically tied to a month to be themed to the Appalachian Trail. So they're all kind of cohesive and naturey. And then each month has a theme. For example, March is tracks of animals that are native to Pennsylvania. And January was mushrooms that were native to Pennsylvania. So you get the idea. If you'd like to see the other months, I have a whole playlist link, which you'll see at least at the end, if not up in the corner right now. So yeah, we're going to get started. I will bring you down closer as I usually do and we'll get started, like I said. So for the extra spread before I started the month, I wanted to create a list where I could put down all of my ideas for my email newsletter, which of course, if you're interested in, you can find down below and subscribe to. It is a great way to keep in contact and keep up to date with all of my creative endeavors. And it's something that I've sadly been putting behind or putting to the side in the past several months, almost a year now, but I really want to get back into it because I enjoy writing these things down and sharing them with all of y'all. So I wanted to have a place where I could have my ideas. So when I was stuck, I had somewhere to look. So we have topic, list, whether they were used and when they were used, because sometimes I like to go back and talk about the same topics, maybe expand upon them, but I don't want to spend three months in a row talking about three really similar topics. So yeah, that's why I have the date there. I decided for my little illustration, I wanted to have a message board of sorts that you might see while on the Appalachian Trail. I felt like this was a really good way to, you know, convey that sort of communication aspect of the spread without, you know, drawing something really unrelated. And of course, since this isn't a month spread, it had to be something that was just kind of Appalachian Trail themed. So yeah, I'm drawing in some notes, some information and a little map and maybe flyers or, you know, messages hung up on the board and just doing the little finishing touches to make it look like it's being actually used.
So then I moved on to the cover page for the month. If you don't know, October is probably my favorite month out of the year, not only because I really, really enjoy Halloween and all things spooky, but also it is my birthday month. So I really wanted to do something fun for this month and I took some time to think about what I could do. So on the cover, I drew the Fisher Cat, which is not actually a cat, nor does it fish. Um, it is more of like a, a mink or a, not an otter, but you know, those long noodly boys, kind of like a ferret maybe. He's not a rodent though. Are ferrets rodents? No, I'm not sure. But they're actually very endangered and are just starting to come back to this part of the United States and North America. So that was kind of cool that I got to learn about him and draw him and put him on my cover. I would 100% recommend you look them up and learn a little bit about them because they're adorable and it's actually really interesting. Like I said, his name is the Fisher Cat, which Fisher comes from a French word that I can't remember. And his scientific name is Bacani Penanti. The quote for this month is, I have loved the stars too fondly to be fearful of the night. Sarah Williams. And I feel like this is kind of a cliche quote that a lot of people use when they're, you know, talking about nighttime or stars. And it could have easily been used for last month with the constellations, but it was just appropriate. It's pretty. I wanted to use it. So then we're on to the October at a glance, which I really enjoy. So I like to draw out this calendar with each day having three by three squares. And I don't know if you can tell right off here, but it starts on Mondays. I always start my calendars on Monday. I just prefer it. It makes sense to me. And yeah, so I go through and I sketch it in and then I add it in the ink later on because I found that if I don't really explicitly sketch it out, I'm gonna make a mess. So once I have all the squares in, I add in an area for notes so that I can expand upon anything I put in the little squares. I usually keep it pretty brief and then write notes down in the notes section. For the illustration for this one, I drew the Virginia opossum. An opossum is different than a possum that you would see in like Australia. These guys are marsupials. Um, they have pouches for their babies. They're really cute. They don't tend to carry rabies. They can't. Their body temperatures are too low for most of the time. And I feel like they're a really misunderstood, not mistreated, but like they get a bad rap and they don't deserve it. I feel like a lot of the nighttime nocturnal animals do, but particularly possums. So I wanted to draw a little guy and I thought he was really cute, really snuggly looking, although I wouldn't try and snuggle a possum. I wouldn't try and snuggle any wild animal, honestly. And I was having some issues. My 01 size pen is actually drying out. I need to order some more. It's the size I use the most. So of course they, it would dry out the fastest. And yeah, that was, you know, really all that happened while I was drawing. So then it is, like I said, a Virginia opossum and the scientific name is Didelphus virginiana. And yeah, he is the opossum that is native to this part of the world. I do believe there is a Mexican opossum or an opossum that lives in South America, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to look that up later. So then I went back in and added in all the dates. I didn't add in the days of the week this time. It wasn't an intentional thing. I think I just forgot. And then for the note spread, which I like to have each month just as a kind of note dump, I drew a striped skunk. I actually think skunks are really cute, although obviously they're very smelly and that is a reason people avoid them. I actually met a pet skunk once. He had been de-stink glanded and his name was Squirt, which I think is a pretty appropriate name for a pet skunk. It was pretty friendly. Would not recommend approaching in the wild. <laughs> but yeah, so I drew in this little skunk. I had fun adding in the stripes just by adding in the fur. And I tried to keep these guys pretty lifelike looking, kind of realistic, but simplified. I didn't want them to look cartoony, but I did want to not be there for hours. So yeah, that was what I did for the skunk and for all of them in terms of their fur. 
I really like how this little guy turned out. I think he's really cute. I like his, his short, stubby little feet. And yeah, that's really all I have to say about the squirrel. About the skunk. Spoiler alert, there's a squirrel later. The scientific name for this little guy is a Mephitis Mephitis. I like having a monthly notes section, even if I don't use it during the month that it's a part of, simply because it's nice to have, and I will end up using it later, and I don't really mind, because the notes very rarely have to do with a specific month or event. So then I move on to the weeklies, and I'm really only going to show you the setup for one because they're all the same. So this is a rolling weekly based very closely on the plant-based bride's rolling weekly. Um, I would recommend checking out her channel if you'd like to see how that's done. I've used it every month this year and I will probably use it this whole year even if I have enough room. Um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So yeah, I add in the dates, the number of the week. The number of the week really isn't that important. I just think it's cool to see the number, like the weeks pass in that way of the year. And then on the other side, I add in the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, for the actual task list. The left side, which is not the side I'm working on right now, is a sort of little weekly calendar, which probably will not be in the future weeks. I will only have the monthly calendar. So for the first week, I decided to draw an American barn owl different from a barred owl. I didn't realize that they were two different types of owls. I thought that it was just an accent or a vernacular way of saying the owl. And this little guy looks really weird because I drew him kind of hunched over looking down at the camera. That was the reference image I used. And I chose this just because he looks so dorky and stupid looking and I absolutely love him. Owls are pretty cool, although I will admit as a kid they used to scare the crap out of me. We had some sort of illustration of an owl. I think it was from like branding of packaging or something like a, a real big owl he used to scare me so I kind of associate owls with being freaked out as a kid even though they don't really scare me now. His scientific name is Taito Furcata and I really would recommend looking them up because they look like big dorks and they're fun to look at. So then I went on to the North American short-tailed shrew. I had fun drawing him. He's a little more simple than some of the other ones just because his fur is very light and there isn't a whole lot of variation, so I didn't really add in much extra fur. I love the fact that his eye is so, so tiny and so far down, and that's, you know, it's tiny because he lives underground and he doesn't really need to see much. But I had fun just drawing this stretched out tubey boy, and yeah, his scientific name is Blarnia brevicauda, and honestly, I had a lot of fun this month learning about all these animals a lot of them I didn't know much about even if I had heard of them before so yeah that was really fun this month So then for the next week, I decided to draw a flying squirrel, which I did not realize we had these in North America. I thought that they were more common in, I think, Asia and South America was what I thought, but I was pleasantly surprised to discover that one is native to this part of the world, and I had fun drawing him. It was kind of hard because he's all flappy and spread out just to get that look that I was going for, but I think he looks all right. He's not super detailed or super accurate, but I don't think he looks bad. I would love to see one of these fly in real life, like maybe in a zoo or something someday. I think that would be really cool. They just kind of glide. They don't, you know, flap their wings like a bird, but I still think it's pretty cool how they stretch out like that. Unfortunately, this little guy is probably my least favorite with how he turned out simply because of, like I said, the stretchy skin, but I still think he looks pretty great. And his scientific name is Glaucomis sabrinus. And then we went on to the long-eared bat. I love bats. I think they're really cool and really cute, but unfortunately, they're not exactly an animal you can keep as a pet or anything like that. So I had fun with this. I had a hard time deciding what areas of his body I wanted to be fluffy and more skin-like, even though it seems kind of obvious. I just, I wanted to have detail, but I didn't want the fluff to cover everything up. But I didn't want him to just kind of look like a solid plastic shape, so 
it took a little bit of figuring, which I did cut out of this video. It looks like I know exactly what I'm doing the whole time, but I really don't. I took my time to figure out how I wanted to draw things and kind of bring the different textures into his illustration, and I think I did all right. Like I said, this is the long-eared bat, and his scientific name is Myotis septentrionis. I think his face looks a little bit monkey-ish, but he's okay. He turned out all right. That's it for this month, and I was really happy with how it turned out. I think this month was kind of simple and maybe one of the months I struggled with designing more because I'm not used to drawing animals, particularly furry animals, but I still had fun with it and I think they all turned out really cute. I think my favorite is probably the skunk, followed closely by the fisher cat, but yeah, like I said, I had a really great time. If you are at all interested in following me online, you can follow me here or on social media on Instagram at Stet Studio. You can also join my mailing list like I mentioned before. And yeah, that's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, all that silliness, whatever you feel the need to do. And yeah, please have a great day. Bye.